Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Friends, welcome back to my channel In this session we will make a complete troubleshooting for a power supply It is 3842 based power supply We will use the basic tips to find any fault in this power supply or any switchboard power supply I have a complete list of faults and how we can troubleshoot it Sometimes the input short circuit, the fuse will burn out, the switching of this IC, startup circuit, VC circuit, output circuit, feedback, fluctuation, and low output voltage, and load handling problems. Let's start. I will request to watch this video completely. I guarantee, after watching this video, you will be able to fix any power supply. In this diagram, we see there is a fuse, then it have a first stage filter, class X capacitors, class Y capacitors and some dual line filter, then these voltage are reaching to bridge rectifier. This portion, it is called EMI, electromagnetic interference circuit or RFI, radio frequency interference circuit. Protection circuit, over ground protection, over frequency protection over voltage protection if there are some spikes so class X capacitor will remove that spikes then we have DC rail in DC rail there is bridge rectifier and capacitor then input surge protection circuit that is here NTC so let's start when we take a power supply first of all okay I will use this clamp meter or you can use any multimeter first of all set to ohms I have this multimeter we can also use this multimeter first of all we have to check the input resistance it must be high 0.672 mega 600 kilo ohms 607 673 kilo ohms so that means the input resistance is high if it is 0 or near to 100 ohms, 200 ohms, that means that will indicate that there is an input short circuit. That input short circuit may be due to any failure of parallel line in both lines. What are that components? Class X capacitor, the yellow one. If this capacitor will make a short circuit, it will allow a easiest path to electrical current and it will cause to damage this fuse if the fuse is damaged how we can verify set multimeter to continuity and connect and connect across fuse fuse both terminals it must give continuity because the fuse is in series line from this point to this point and this line is moving directly here these both lines are reaching here across this capacitor this yellow capacitor if it will make a short circuit what will happen we will take a tone on the multimeter we will take a beep so that means there is an input short circuit. What is going on? The current will flow from this point to fuse and there. From this path. Then we have dual line filter. When we apply voltage. Okay, let's apply voltage as well. Always use series lamp for testing. When the current is applied, the circuit is live, never touch any component. We can see when I will connect the lamp will glow for a while and then it will stable. If the lamp illuminates permanently that means there is something short. If this capacitor is short it will give a easiest path so that means we have a short circuit here in this portion or any component if we have second stage filter that will also make problem we can check AC voltage set multimeter to AC voltage 231 volt 
if you want to check fuse live check voltage across this fuse it must be zero volt if the fuse is open all AC voltage will drop here and we will find this supply voltage to 31 volt across this open fuse if the fuse is open the fuse is blown at that time we will take full voltage here then these voltage reach at this dual line filter that is here 233 volt 231 volt whatsoever and the same voltage must pass out from this inductor in some cases this inductor basically this inductor is a piece of two wires which are wound on this ferret core the electrical current will enter from one side and it will go to the second side the same is other side so both wires will conduct the electrical paths to the second end in some cases this filter becomes open sometimes bad joints here sometime it is disconnected from the PCB so if this inductor is fail it will not allow to pass voltage to the second side it is in two portions one portion the second portion one portion is, is here the second portion is here we must find continuity if we are checking voltage in that case we will find AC voltage in the output side 234 volt that's good then this voltage must reach at the bridge rectifier here we are finding the same AC voltage here in the bridge rectifier if you cannot find voltage here that means there is some open circuit what is open circuit fuse sometime there is NTC or PTC for protection when any line will not give an electrical path to the to this point or this line that means we have something open circuit in series there is a current protection in parallel we will find voltage protection might be any capacitor any component is causing short circuit and it is causing to open this fuse sometime this PTC or NTC it is open circuit if it is damaged it will not allow the voltage to this point now sometime the bridge rectifier is damaged first of all check DC voltage at this capacitor if it has some voltage discharge it properly how we can check bridge rectifier set multimeter to diode in diode mod we have diode fun diode symbol here or uh, if we are using this type of multimeter we will find a diode symbol here now we are in diode mode to test this bridge rectifier from this point to this point we will verify all this circuit now the black lead must be in the common the red lead in the diode voltage hertz pin locate the negative terminal of the capacitor at negative terminal connect this pin here red pin at negative terminal A red pin of the multimeter at negative terminal and red pin must be here and black pin must be in the common port now red pin here black pin here it is giving 0.57 volt at input terminal where we are applying AC voltage this time the AC voltage are disconnected this point and this point so that means the bridge rectifier two diodes are good 0.58 0.55 okay now move this red lead to positive terminal and swap these leads here it must open that means two diodes are forward biased two diodes are reverse biased 
now swap these leads first red lead was at negative terminal now black lead at negative terminal and connect red lead one by one here it is open it is open move black lead to the positive terminal of the capacitor 0.55 0.55 that means the four diodes are good if any pair out of these four will short circuit at that time we will take continuity and we will take continuity in two conditions here it is giving one diode here it is giving the second diode but if we find the same time continuity here that means the bridge rectifier is bad and then there is another condition for this indication that is this MOSFET I will discuss later so if this circuit is good until now we will find DC voltage here if the AC voltage are available here then we will find DC voltage here in this circuit if you see this bridge rectifier this end and this end one end is at 90 degree and the second end it have a slope it have a cut so this cut mark it is positive if we see the bridge rectifier itself it have a positive sign here under exactly this cut so this is positive terminal and this end is negative terminal negative terminal we have a NTC it is 5d11 sometime it is 5d9 10d11 so NTC it is a temperature coefficient resistance so it will compensate the temperature effect and it will protect this capacitor from surge from surge current in this diagram the NTC is shown here and physically we have NTC here in the output of this bridge rectifier Sometimes this capacitor is short circuit internally. If it is short circuit internally, what happens? It will damage these diodes or it will damage this fuse. If the capacitor is short circuit, it will damage these diodes. Or might be the fuse will open. We replace the fuse, fuse will open. At that time we need to check this capacitor. It is the short circuit fault. Then I will discuss another fault for this capacitor. If we have two diodes short circuit in this bridge at that time, when one diode have to block and second to conduct, and the same time the second diode will also conduct, it will damage the fuse. So while cold testing, we can verify the health of this bridge rectifier. Now this negative voltage are here, and the same negative voltage are applied here at this point here we have a current sense resistor and we have a MOSFET here most of the time this MOSFET is damaged positive voltage are reaching here and if this MOSFET is short circuit what will happen it will apply easiest path to this negative line from positive negative in normal conditions this MOSFET must be open here in continuity it is open if it gives continuity that means the MOSFET is short circuit and this will also cause to damage this fuse now let's check the first problem if it is short circuit fuse open number one if second stage filter this capacitor number two bridge circuit number 3 capacitor number 4 MOSFET number 5 so these 5 components will cause to burn this fuse and then we have 2 capacitors here that are class Y capacitors so these are 6 components these 2 capacitors here this capacitor from one line second capacitor from second line if these both capacitors in some cases if these both capacitors get short circuit 
at that time this AC line will come here and it will reach back here sometime one capacitor is damaged if one capacitor is damaged we will take the live component AC voltage in the chassis that is one reason for that fault but if these both capacitors become short circuit because the bad behavior for a capacitor when it is open circuit that means it have no effect but when it will make short circuit it will make a big disaster so these two capacitors or these two capacitors will make the same situation now we will check voltage until here friends if video is good hit the like button if you have not subscribed my channel subscribe it and press bell notification for all so that you will get notified for my every new video check AC voltage at input terminal AC voltage at bridge rectifier input so that means our this circuit is clear then DC voltage it is 319 volt AC voltage bridge rectifier inside 232 volt bridge rectifier outer pins 319 approximately we can say 100 volt difference how much are the AC input voltage multiply it with 1.414 you will find the resultant voltage here if we will find these voltage these DC voltage input AC voltage multiply it with 1.414 and if you find that voltage here that means the capacitor is good input circuit is good if we cannot find the voltage approximately equal to the, the resultant value that means there is something wrong the first situation if this capacitor is bad internally it is open at that time it will not store the charge and the multimeter will show the RMS value of the voltage it will not give a peak voltage so in that condition we must check this capacitor this capacitor will open the second step here analyze this voltage 319.9 these are stable voltage if these voltage are step moving up down up down 315 300 to 325 like that if it is making a jumping that means there is something wrong in the power supply we will discuss this point later here we discussed input short circuit fuse will burn out class X class Y capacitor bridge circuit capacitor and MOSFET if this MOSFET is bad what it will do the basic duty of this MOSFET is to block this voltage when it is off it will not allow any electrical current from ground to the positive terminal ground is here MOSFET and winding if this MOSFET is short circuit this negative voltage will pass through this MOSFET and current will flow directly uncontrolled current it have to allow a controlled current the pulses which are generated from this IC but if it is allowing a full current uncontrolled current that means it will not allow to build voltage at this capacitor and it will draw a maximum current because this transformer it have a very low resistance in DC it will work as a simple piece of wire in that condition we will check this MOSFET if this MOSFET is short circuit it will not allow to build voltage here and it will draw more current maximum current at the, in that condition the fuse will burn out immediately let's make short circuit for this MOSFET I connected a jumper between drain to source what will happen the lamp will glow full 
So if this MOSFET is short circuit, most of the time the fuse will burn out. DC voltage at this capacitor, it is 317 volt stable. Then we will find this voltage at this capacitor, at this terminal, at this point, it will reach to this transformer primary winding and it will reach to this MOSFET. Now we will measure voltage between MOSFET drain and source. The source is connected to ground through a through a resistor that is current sensor resistor. We will check voltage now at this point and this point across this capacitor and then we will check voltage across these two points. DC voltage. I have 314 volt at capacitor. Why we have more voltage here? When the voltage are applied at this point then we have winding and we have a MOSFET that is now switching. If this IC will receive voltage at VCC pin that is pin number 7. Let's discuss first of all pin number 7. We have SMPS controller IC here UC3842 and here we have a small capacitor electrolyte capacitor 3842 UC3843, 3844 and UC3845. These four ICs are a family. The circuit con configuration will remain same just only the voltage level and duty cycle will change from one to another. We have a 270k resistor 1 watt. Then we have a capacitor that is 47 microfarad 50 volts. That is here. And we have one resistor that is connected between positive line and this capacitor that is here, this resistor. So it will drop the current and it will charge this capacitor for initial stage, initial startup. Because this IC needs some voltage to take a start. First of all, this capacitor will charge from this point. DC voltage, it is 12.31 volt. When this IC will receive voltage at VCC pin, at that time it will start switching. When it will start switching, now first of all we will check the frequency between ground pin and the pin number 6. This is pin number 6. So this IC is switching at 101 kilohertz or we can say 100 kilohertz. That means this IC is switching 100 kilohertz. That it is generating 100,000 pulses in one second to operate this MOSFET. So this MOSFET will allow a conduction. It will allow a electrical current from ground to this winding. When it will allow current the current will change very speedy the current will flow with a speed and it will keep connecting disconnecting this connection disconnection of this current will cause to vary the magnetic field here in the winding when this current will flow the magnetic field will expand when this MOSFET will turn off at that time this magnetic field will collapse this collapsing magnetic field will transfer voltage in the secondary because it is a flyback. In on time it will store the energy in this winding and in off time it will transfer voltage in the secondary. When it is transferring at the same time the collapsing magnetic field will cause to increase the voltage at this drain. And this voltage, the collapsing magnetic field will cause to generate voltage. That voltage will reverse in polarity. It is called snubber circuit. It will discharge that, that voltage, but it will cause a voltage increase in the drain. Now if we check voltage here, it is 317 volt. 
This MOSFET is the rightmost pin that is source pin. The center pin that is drain pin. Drain pin is connected to the transformer primary winding. So we will check this same DC voltage here. 320 volt and between drain to source. It is 373 volt. Why these are 373 volt? At this point 320 but at this point 370 why in the primary side in the hot side we have transformer four terminals where is the transformer transformer is here we have four terminals here one two three and four this is capacitor positive terminal so positive terminal is here and it is reaching to the winding that is here transformer second side this point it is reaching to the MOSFET MOSFET drain that is here and then we have a diode resistor and capacitor where is diode at the same point where is MOSFET here at that, that point we have a diode here that is here this diode this resistor and this capacitor we have three components it is called RCD resistor capacitor diode snubber circuit what is the duty of this circuit when MOSFET is conducting in that condition the negative voltage are reaching here so it will cause to reverse bias this diode and current have to flow in the primary when this MOSFET will open the magnetic field stored here will collapse when it, it will collapse it will generate reverse voltage equal to this capacitor if here we have 316 volt 320 volt the same reverse voltage will be generated through this winding so the voltage will reach at this point in reverse format positive negative positive so MOSFET this end drain end will cause to bear a voltage 640 volt to protect this MOSFET from damage the excessive voltage reverse polarity voltage in that condition it will be discharged through this RCD snubber circuit if this this diode is short circuit most of the time it is it becomes short circuit when it is short circuit it will make two conditions the first condition when the current will start to flow it will give a parallel path to this winding actually it have to st stop the current but in conduction mode it will allow the flow of current through the diode to the resistor and the second flow here at that time the IC will switch but it will not create a strong magnetic field here so that will cause to drop voltage in the output if we need 12 volt it will cause to produce we can say 5 volt 6 volt 3 volt whatsoever so this is the basic problem for the dropped voltage in the secondary side. So that is the reason. Here were 319, 320 volt, but here was 350 volt, 30 volt more than this capacitor value. That means this MOSFET is switching. This IC is switching. The current is flowing in the primary. If we cannot find the voltage increase here that means this IC is not working the first condition the second condition might be the IC is switching as we checked here at pin number six we are finding 100 kilohertz signal then we have our resistor we have a diode that is to discharge this gate to give a voltage at gate gate biasing so this zener sometime it is short circuit if it is short circuit this MOSFET will not switch if the MOSFET is open inside 
that means it will not switch if it is short circuit it will turn it will cause to burn out this fuse but it is open when it is open it will not allow a current in the winding ic is switching it is doing its job but it will not allow a current flow in this part then we have a current sensor resistor that is sometimes less than one ohm all the time sometime it is one ohm 0.2 ohm, 0.3 ohm, here it is using 0.7 ohm. If this resistor is open, in most cases when the MOSFET is damaged, this resistor also damage because it is to protect the circuit that is here. It is always connected from negative line to the source, the rightmost pin of this MOSFET. If this is open, that means it will not allow a ground path to the source how we can check it it is given 0.3 ohms now when we receive voltage here at this IC pin number 7 pin number 5 of this IC is ground at that time this IC will produce 5 volt reference how we can say this IC is good set multimeter to DC it is ground and here is pin number 7 that is taking 12.3 volt 12.29 volt and it will provide 5 volt reference this IC have internal 5 volt regulator if it is taking voltage and it is not giving output voltage 5 volt here in the output side this circuit will never work we must find 5 volt here ground and pin number 8 must be clear for 5 volt pin number 8 must have 5 volt pin number 5 must connect it to ground so that this IC will work properly then we have RTCT the timing capacitor and timing resistor if these voltage are not available the timing circuit will not work because this 5 volt will cause to charge and discharge this capacitor at pin number 4 so these voltage are very very important to make oscillation then this IC is switching we tested the switching if we find the voltage here drain to source DC voltage that means this IC is switching now how we can say this circuit is switching we can also check frequency ground and gate pin it is giving 100 kilohertz signal so that means we are finding the voltage here we are finding the signal here we can also check with oscilloscope at gate to ground I tested now gate to ground we are taking this voltage then in some conditions we find the voltage fluctuation at VCC capacitor if this diode is open circuit in the auxiliary winding we have a diode and current setting resistor this diode is here so this diode must provide voltage here so this current setting resistor and diode if we see here as we discussed positive line positive voltage the switching line that is coming from this drain then we have two pins of this winding here the one pin that is connected to the ground terminal the second pin of this auxiliary winding that is here it is connected to current setting resistor that is under this transformer in this design it is shown under here so this voltage will reach here then we have a diode here at this point so this diode is connected to VCC capacitor here in some conditions this diode is damaged in some conditions we have some open circuit here DC voltage check DC voltage across this diode 
so we will verify that there is a switching and we are finding this voltage here winding this end is grounded this is output resistor and here we are taking 12.58 volt this diode is giving voltage if we cannot find this voltage so that means it will not charge this capacitor here in initial stage the voltage were, were reaching at this capacitor it was charging it was causing to start when this IC will start switching before this it will charge at 1 milliampere but the requirement of this IC for example it is 17 milliampere so this capacitor will not drive for a long time because it will discharge when it will start discharging the voltage level will become low to compensate this voltage we must find the voltage from this side because this resistor cannot provide enough current to drive this IC for a long time so we will find a feedback voltage we will find a operating voltage for this IC that are called auxiliary voltage VCC voltage or bias voltage it is providing biasing voltage this resistor is very critical resistor in this circuit we will discuss finally when we will discuss the voltage issue now received voltage at this point received voltage at this capacitor it start to produce reference voltage and this IC start to oscillate and provide it drive signal at gate of this MOSFET and MOSFET started to switch its drain pin to the transformer transformer now will provide voltage in the output in the output side we have this winding two pins one pin is connected here at output pin that is ground pin the second pin that is here it is reaching to this diode this rectifier that is here sometime it is using this diode sometime it is using a single diode to take more current it is using full wave rectifier we will check DC voltage across this rectifier it is giving 12.24 volt here when we want to check output voltage of this winding we cannot check voltage across this winding here why because it is a source it is a generator we will not find any voltage DC voltage 67 millivolt if we want to check AC voltage it will give 0 volt why because the transformer winding does not have any resistance it is in micro ohms so we cannot test voltage here because when it is operating it will provide the easiest path so voltage will pass here and in micro volt drop it will appear at this winding so we cannot say there is a switching so this diode it will rectify and it will pass the voltage to the output capacitor so we can find voltage here in the reverse voltage when it is a reverse cycle it will drop the voltage in forward condition it will not give voltage in a reverse biasing it will give a voltage drop across its junction so we will just only find the voltage here the same voltage will reach here in the output terminal 12.12 volt and some voltage for filtration so if we cannot find a good voltage here that means this diode is short circuit this rectifier is bad if we have this situation at that time we need to replace this diode then we have output capacitors electrolyte capacitors are the biggest problem in any power supply because these capacitors have their limited operation life with the passage of time their life expires they reduce their capacitance they reduce their specifications so these cannot hold charge properly so that time 
the load will not driven properly so we will find fluctuation we will find some issues here so it is showing voltage 12 volt the voltage positive voltage are reaching here negative positive then this voltage will pass through this inductor this inductor will remove ripples that is here now we are finding voltage output voltage here in the output terminal we have some resistor and LED and it is showing some voltage here then we have our feedback circuit that is the most critical component in the regulation one line that will reach to the optocoupler one pin and then we will take a voltage from this output terminal and it we will make a voltage divider there is a variable resistor to adjust the output voltage level so we will find a voltage level at pin number one so here we have the voltage regulator adjustable voltage regulator ground terminal and this pin it is giving 2.478 volt we have voltage divider network here the one line it is connected to LED LED is here here we have LED and a current limit resistor for this LED the same voltage are divided through this voltage divider network this one resistor this second resistor and these voltage are reaching at this potentiometer so that we will find 2.4 volt 2.478 when we will find these voltage at this pin at that time this power supply will start regulation it will provide drive signal to the optocoupler so optocoupler is here and the one line from this positive voltage is reaching directly to the optocoupler one pin now in the optocoupler one side it is giving 1.1 volt it is giving voltage here when it will receive 2.47 volt or 2.5 volt here at pin number one it is a condition at that time it will give a cathode current to this optocoupler it will generate optical light from this LED to its output transistor that is phototransistor what will happen when there is no load we will receive some regulated voltage here it will give a constant light in that condition these reference voltage V reference will reach here to the collector and when it will switch it will give some voltage and it this voltage will reach at pin number two of this IC when the voltage level is maintained at that time it will conduct it will provide voltage to pin number two now it is dropping 0.96 volt across its this transistor emitter to collector 0.9 volt so it is now saturated it is providing voltage to pin number two when the voltage level is dropped at that time it will cause to reduce the light when the light will reduce the conduction of this transistor will decrease when decrease internal resistance will increase so these voltage when the voltage are regulated at 12 volt it will give a light so this light will start conduction so these reference voltage will reach here and we will take output from here in that case it will work in conduction mode so that this resistor net network it will give a feedback pin feedback voltage to pin number two 
so that uh, this IC will stabilize its duty cycle. If any time the voltage level at this capacitor will decrease, it will cause to drop in the voltage at this anode. It will cause to drop the current. It will cause to decrease the light. When the light will decrease, its internal junction resistance will increase so that the voltage level, the 5 volt here coming here to this pin will change. When it will change, this IC will increase its duty cycle. When it will increase its duty cycle, the magnetic field will increase. Increased magnetic field will cause to more voltage in the secondary, so that decreased voltage level will compensate it. And when it is compensated, voltage level, it level is maintained. At that time, this light will return back to its good working conditions at that time. This conduction will become to normal so that this IC will take feedback and it will work normally. It will increase or decrease its duty cycle with the change in this light. If this TL431 or any voltage regulator is failed to provide a cathode drive to this optocoupler here, that is DC voltage 1.1 volt in this DC voltage there are some pulses that is charging discharging of this pulse this capacitor the voltage level here at this capacitor will charging discharging charging discharging so charging discharging charging discharging these pulses will appear here how much the speedy pulses are here that will determine the value of this load if we are drawing 2 ampere current so that this capacitor will char charge and discharge very speedy so it will generate pulses these pulses these ramps will reach here so that this IC will adjust its duty cycle it will compensate the voltage to maintain 12 volt here if the load is removed this capacitor will stable when it is stable it will not discharge rapidly at that time the light will stable and IC will work at its specified duty cycle if this TL431 is bad it will drive this IC this optocoupler wrongly when it will give a wrong command to this optocoupler at that time the voltage level will be any value might be it is very high might be it is very low if this optocoupler is bad its inside diode is giving good continuity drop forward and reverse voltage we can say this is good but it is if it is not working properly at that time we have to replace this optocoupler how we can say it is working in conduction mod here we have 1.1 volt and here we have approximately 0.9 volt if this internal transistor is bad at that time this optocoupler will not switch this voltage and the IC will not find the feedback many times these capacitors become short circuit internally at that time the IC switches on and off the voltage fluctuates we will find a random voltage here here we have 12 volts if we have some overload condition at that time the voltage will fluctuate like this at that time the IC drives at full condition but we cannot find the voltage output why if this capacitor is short circuit internally the IC will drive but the all the voltage will discharge here entirely here in that condition we will find fluctuation the varying voltage the second thing at that time if we have some problem here in the output side we will find fluctuation here ground and pin number seven are VCC capacitor here we have 12 volt let me connect 
some load here now Now a connected load. This time we are taking twelve point twelve point three volts at VCC capacitor. Now I applied some load. When the load is applied, the voltage at VCC pin increased about fourteen point three four. Without load, twelve point two volt, fourteen volt. If I change another load, 13.97. If I put overload, what is going on? The voltage are increasing. We can see this time this IC is working overload. 12 volt. and we can verify the both multimeters when it becomes in drive at that time these voltage at pin number 7 will increase when it will increase it will increase from its threshold that is 16 volt when the voltage will reach above 16 volt this IC will turn off when it will turn off it will disconnect its drive at that time the VCC capacitor will drive IC for a short time and then it will off why it will off because that time when the drive is disconnected this winding will turn off because drive removed from here when it is removed the voltage here in the primary will stop when the current flow in primary will stop it will stop to generate voltage here in auxiliary. In bias winding, when bias winding will stop, at that time the IC will work on this capacitor. When this capacitor will discharge about less than 12 volt, 10 volt, what is its threshold? At that time this IC will start switching again. When it will start switching, we have overload in the output side. At that time, this voltage will increase again. The multimeter is showing 14.44 volt. But if we will see on the oscilloscope, it will approximately 16 volt. At 16 volt, it is called OLP, overload protection. When overload protection will occur at that time, this IC will stop switching. It will remain off until UVLO under voltage lockout that is less than 10 volt here it is showing 11 volt it is in milliseconds and this will reach less than 8 volt 9 volt at that time this IC will start switching again and we will find voltage so this is the theory of operation and fault finding now we can say we must find 12.2 2 volt 12 volt at no load operation if we will find 14 volt here with no load and we say we put some load at that time this power supply goes in off condition what is the reason how we can fix that at that time we have to increase this resistance that is in series of this diode It is 10 ohm. We can apply 20 ohm, 22 ohms until without load. If this 3842 will receive 12 volt, that time this IC will take full load. The second problem we have a current limit resistor here. In this current based SMPS ICs, we have this current limit resistor. If the value of this current limit resistor will increase 
at that time it will give a more voltage feedback to this pin i sense pin that is pin number 3 in that condition this ic will not drive for full load we have to reconsider the value of this resistor or this resistor we can adjust it to take full current friends i hope so this video is informative if it is informative hit the like button if you have any question please let me know in the comment box thanks for watching assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh